Hey guys, even here and this video we are starting with very interesting news. David Hoffman is actually doing bodybuilding open division in Spain this weekend. Yes, this weekend we have two pro shows, Texas and Spain. So David Hoffman is doing open bodybuilding. I made a video about this uh, not so long ago. I thought he was gonna do the open at Portugal Pro, but he didn't. Now it's official, basically. His name is on the list and he shared this on his IG. So yes, he is doing open. How do I feel about it? What do I think? I think the same thing I thought when I made that video, if you watched it. I think he is suited more for bodybuilding than he is for classic. He does have a classical physique, but it looks good in the open when he diets down and loses all the muscle that he needs to lose to fit in the weight cap for classic. He loses the pop, he loses that, that, that classic factor that he has and he just looks stringy, he looks soft, he doesn't have the pop, he just looks bad, and that's why he can't place very well in those shows. When I say look bad, I mean potential-wise, and also how well he can place. With this look, sure, he can qualify for the Mr. Olympia and be like top 10 or something, best case scenario, but is that really what he should go for? Even if he is happy with that result, I think it's still a pity because he has so much potential to be a great bodybuilder. He reminds me of Dennis Wolf a little bit and also he's German like Dennis. There is a handful of German bodybuilders who are really in that top, top level. And I think David Hoffman has the potential to be that if he really pushed his body to the limits. Now I'm showing you this photo again. This is his most recent update. This is him right now. So again, as I said, he reminds me a little bit of Dennis Wolf with that uh, large frame, with those uh, popping, popping high lats, small waist, and, and good axe taper, uh, a little bit flatter biceps and arms, but big, huge arms. So he does look pretty aesthetic, you know, he does have the classic lines, but he flourishes, he looks much better when he can relax and doesn't have to die down and just lose all the muscle and lose all the, all the pop, all the hardness. You know, when your muscles lose the, the, the fullness, it doesn't stretch the skin as much and just doesn't look that good. So him for the open, that's where he should be. Now, he said this, and I said this a couple of times, he said this publicly, he said the reason why he's doing classic is because it's easier for him, because he can spend more time with his family, he doesn't have to work as hard, and <laughs> that sucks. I mean, competing in classic physique and not believing in it, I do respect his honesty, I definitely do, but I don't want him in classic if he doesn't believe in the division. Yes, he does believe in, in golden era stuff, in classic posing, whatever, he did a lot of that and he does that even when he competes in the open and all that, but as far as the division, as the division classic physique that came out in 2016, uh, you know, longer trunks and all that, it seems like the only reason he's doing it is because it's easier for him. I mean, it doesn't seem. That's exactly what he said. So not the best representation for classic physique because of that. I'm glad he's doing the Open. Can he win Spain Pro? No. No, of course not. I think Nathan Diasha is doing it and Nathan is a freak, a monster. So, of course, he's going to be blown away by some of the other bigger guys. But uh, in a couple of years, maybe, if he really decides to push things harder, to get bigger, fuller, rounder, more more massive, yeah, I can see him be one of the top guys, maybe, sure. I don't know how much can he really push his body, he doesn't seem like a youngster, so we'll see what's gonna happen with him in the next couple of years. I don't know what his plans are though, but we will see him this weekend in Spain Pro. This is Hassan Mustafa right now. Is David Hoffman gonna have to face Hassan? No, Hassan is doing Texas. Um, you can see the difference between bodybuilder that is basically massive, as, as massive you can get, and somebody who is a little bit more streamlined, who came from classic. So this is, this is mass, sheer mass, insane mass. Uh, not super conditioned, crispy kind of physique, but massive. And I'm honestly surprised that Hassan just keeps competing, show after show, show after show. I don't think we ever saw, in, I mean, in how many years did we see somebody do the entire bodybuilding season, basically. I don't think he skipped a show this year. So, uh, yeah, of course, he's going to have to skip Spain because it's on the same day, same weekend. But uh, he's going to do Texas and he's going to be facing some of the top guys like Steve Kuklo, Ian Valier. So probably another third spot for him. He probably already has enough points and he will be at the Mr. Olympia. Whatever happens, he has a lot of points. He had so many shows. Can he win Texas? Like, he has the potential, he has the tools. 
But at this point, I don't think anybody would bet on him being conditioned because he didn't bring it once in all these shows. He was always soft, too soft. The only reason why he's placing so high is because of his insane genetics, uh, structure, muscularity, uh, symmetry-wise, so many other factors, everything aside from conditioning. He has everything. And he's one of the biggest guys in IBB right now, pound for pound. He's so freaking massive. So, best case scenario for him this show, my prediction would be top 3, again, best case scenario. I don't know who else is gonna be there that is dangerous, like we have Phil Klahar. So, you guys tell me who's gonna be higher there. I mean, can Phil Klahar repeat his conditioning from Tampa? And because he was at Chicago also and he was in third callout. So, at Tampa, yeah, okay, Tampa, that's what Hassan skipped, <laughs> Hassan skipped that show, and I think that's the only show he skipped, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, like, I wouldn't be too surprised if I saw Hassan beat Phil Klahar, because Phil, he has no legs, unfortunately, I don't know, I know you guys like him, I know you like his conditioning, he was shredded, from behind, especially the glutes, the, the back, everything, but from the front, not really great, bad stomach and small legs, and Hassan is gonna showcase that everybody is gonna look uh, small, especially in the legs, standing next to Hassan. So even though Hassan won't be the sharpest up there, he will still do well. And right here, he does look really impressive. But I'm curious to see what he's gonna look like on stage. I mean, I'm not really that curious. I'm expecting him to be the same, same condition. But imagine if he brought a little bit sharper package. That would definitely do some damage to the show if he was actually in condition. Will he ever be this conditioned, this crispy, like Ian Wallier? He seems much better than he was at Tampa. He was admittedly a little bit off with conditioning at Tampa. I wouldn't say off. He was 263 on the stage. That's a, a lot of weight. That's a huge, huge bodybuilder, massive bodybuilder. So his conditioning wasn't exactly super crispy. I think he's gonna be lighter at this show and much more conditioned. I'm not saying he was off at Tampa. He was definitely in i mean the glutes were in he was conditioned he wasn't off but here he looks sharper is this sharpness this added conditioning the improvement uh, in conditioning department gonna be enough to beat steve kuklo i don't see that i don't think so i think still steve is gonna win but it's gonna be a good showdown for sure i'm pretty sure these two guys are gonna be battling for that first spot that's probably gonna be the call out those two guys uh, as you can see right here ian does look uh, more shredded crispier as he says in the description of that post, here you can see how crispy he actually is. He looks like an anatomy chart, basically. I mean, as much as, as a guy of his size can be conditioned. Maybe he can be sharper a little bit, but that's basically it. I mean, how much more fat can he really lose? Or water, or whatever. He looks good. He looks shredded. That's it. That's conditioning, guys. He is definitely not gonna be off with conditioning, no. Was this photo necessary? Couldn't he have just taken a photo with the trunks, posing trunks? He probably could have, but whatever. You can see everything here and you can see that he is peeled. He is shredded. And he is huge as well. So it's gonna be a good, hell of a show actually, this Texas Pro. It's gonna be a great battle between these two guys, Steve Kuko and Ian Valier. Sergio Oliva's evolution continues as he's prepping for Arnold Classic. This is the famous victory pose made famous by his father, Sergio Oliva Sr., the legend of bodybuilding. And now his son, Sergio Oliva Jr., is doing the same thing. Is he doing it better? Better in terms of if these guys competed against one another, Sergio Oliva Jr. would win because he has much better conditioning. But era for era, Sergio Oliva Sr. is definitely much more of a legend. He was Mr. Olympia for a couple of times. I don't think it's even necessary to talk about this. Maybe Sergio Oliva Jr. is going to win the Mr. Olympia one day and actually, you know, surpass his father, placings-wise. But you guys know that competition back in the day was much, uh, much, much weaker. Today it's way more competitive because the sport uh, grew so much and the, the guys have to be so much better. And Sergio Oliva Jr. is one of the best in the sport right now. He's probably one of the top 10 bodybuilders in the world. We'll see him in about 6-7 weeks at Arnold Classic. We'll see how well will he do. Can he be in that top 5 again? Last time he was top 5, but that lineup, even though it was a great lineup, wasn't as strong as it's gonna be this year, I think. 
So it's going to be tough, it's going to be challenging to be fifth again, but who knows? With the improvements that he claims to have made, it might be the case. We'll see. Peter Molnar. So we have an update of him as well. At six weeks out of Arnold Classic UK, he is in good condition. He's basically shredded. He looks great. Can he win that division? Yes. But I kind of changed my mind about uh, Peter a little bit. I thought he is one of the guys that actually has the potential of beating Chris Bumstead. Now, I'm not so sure anymore, because if you talk about Peter Molnar, a bodybuilder, open bodybuilder, that's insane. That physique is just ridiculous. And if that physique stepped on a classic physique stage, it probably would be unbeatable. But that's way over the weight cap. When he competes in classic, he needs to lower the weight. Same thing with uh, David Hoffman. I talked about it before. It loses that freak factor. As you can see right here, he looks great, but that's not Peter Molnar that we know from those freaky photos and, and, and videos. And a lot of people actually saw him in person and they know what a freak he is. And he's not that much of a freak in the classic division. Guys like Chris Bumstead, they need to diet down and exactly when he's in shape, that's the weight cap for him. That's easy, that's ideal. And uh, Peter Molnar, not really the case. He does look great and I think he can win the Arnold Classic UK Classic physique division, but as far as Mr. Olympia to beat Chris Bumstead, no, no. With his versions on a bodybuilding stage, sure, I can see that, for sure, but I forgot about the fact that he needs to downsize, and that's where he loses that freak factor, and that's why I have to change my mind and say he cannot beat Chris Bumstead, no. Chan Kang, the top Olympian in classic physique, he was like fourth or fifth, I believe, the year before last. And this guy has an amazing shape. Look at these arms and the lats and broad chest and the vacuum, the ribcage. Wow, what a beautiful physique. And he's not even showing his legs. His legs are definitely his, his freakiest body part. And here he says that he is 100 kilos and that he still needs to grow more. So obviously if he's growing and looking like this with his body fat percent and water retention that he is at right now, he's probably not competing this year. And he's saying he needs to grow more. How much more can he really grow uh, and stay in classic physique? I would be surprised if he switched to bodybuilding, 212, whatever. Because he has such an amazing, amazing classic physique. Yes, those arms do look bodybuilding. He has arms for bodybuilding. He's not one of those guys who are doing classic because they don't have arms, including myself. Uh, or Chris Bumstead, for that matter. No, this guy has crazy arms and crazy aesthetics. And he's trying to grow more, guys. 100 kilos, that's like 227. And he's a short guy, so he probably doesn't have a lot more room to grow. Well, maybe a little bit more. But I don't think it's the problem with, with size. He has enough size to be great in classic physique, to keep being great. To win it? I, I don't know. Chris Bumstead, it's very hard. It's very hard for anybody to beat Chris. But to be one of the top guys, maybe like second, to beat Terence Ruffin... I think he can do that if he was crispy, if he was super, super conditioned. He has everything else. Beautiful lines, beautiful aesthetics, structure, symmetry, everything. What he needs is not more mass, just crispy, hard conditioning. And for the end of the video, we have very interesting news. Zach Khan, also known as Zach King Khan, is competing this weekend in Europa, in, in Spain. Basically, uh, buys and tries page announced this. I'll be honest, I'm not sure where did they find this information, is his name on the list or whatever, I don't know, but they are saying it, so it's probably true, accurate, and you guys probably know who Zach Khan is, one of those crazy genetically blessed bodybuilders who didn't really live up to his full potential. There is a comment from Sergio Oliva Jr. saying that Zach and uh, Lionel Biecki are gonna be two Mr. Olympias we never got. What he is saying, basically, is that genetics are only going to take you so far and these guys did have the potential to be one of the best, one of the greatest in the world. But unfortunately, for different reasons, probably, they didn't really live up to their full potential. Lionel, he was just never able to bring conditioning and Zach he had a lot of injuries. But when he was younger, he looked like he can like easily win the Mr. Olympia. Look at this and tell me this isn't one of the craziest, most muscular crab poses you ever saw. Not super conditioned, sure, but if he got this crispy, how well would he place? 
I think there was a good potential for him to win the Mr. Olympia. However, he injured, I believe, his knees or something with his legs. And he's like a super, super dramatic kind of guy. Uh, I don't like his personality, to be honest. Not at all. I don't know about you guys. Super, super dramatic. Uh, whatever. Last time he competed, he looked something like this. So the legs definitely didn't look good. Nor was the upper body super impressive. So I think you can expect something similar to this. He is active on social media. I think he's changing accounts. He's sometimes private, sometimes he isn't. He is not posting anything about uh, himself as a bodybuilder, no physique updates, nothing like himself training or anything. He's posting some motivational quotes and, uh, and some kind of egotistical stuff. I'm not even gonna get into that and show it to you. If you guys are curious, you can check it out, but it's really nothing to see. As far as him being on stage, I'm not expecting him to be, mu to be much better than this. And it's interesting because he is one of those uh, Instagram, not really Instagram, but like not even social media, but just internet popular guys because he was popular back in the day for his off-season crazy looking photos and some of those uh, shows when he was younger and he showed a lot of potential. But as far as a competitive pro bodybuilder uh, in the past how many years? No, he didn't really, he was never like on the level of Sergio Oliva, Ian Valier, Steve Kukul and the other guys, no. So this year at Spain, we can expect something similar to this, probably nothing super impressive. I hope he proves me wrong, but that's just what I expect. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding content and coverage of Spain Pro and Texas Pro, subscribe to this channel. I will be the first to post a video here. So guys, once again, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.